It's an honor to fill in for Michael today. Sorry you couldn't be here, but the good news is I've cut my sermon down from three hours to two hours, so <laughs> you'll get out of here pretty soon. What I want to talk about just for a few minutes today is having what it means to have an attitude of gratitude. I was thinking about that in terms of Thanksgiving coming up. It reminded me of a little young boy who had a pet turkey. He was like, you have a, Mary had a little lamb. This boy had a little turkey. And he told his dad, I'm going to take my turkey to church next Sunday. He said, oh, no, you're not. I said, why is that? He said, because he speaks a foul language. <laughs> I'll let you off for that. <laughs> There's a song that's played on the radio, a contemporary Christian song several years ago, but it was called If the Healing Doesn't Come, and I want to read the words to it because you may be in a place now where you're looking for an answer from God for a physical ailment or a financial ailment or a relational ailment. And these words may be exactly for you. I love them. Sometimes all we have to hold on to is what we know is true, of who you are. So when the heartache hits like a hurricane, that could never change who you are. And we trust in who you are, even if the healing doesn't come. And life falls apart, and dreams are still undone. You are the God, you are God, you are good, forever faithful one, even if the healing doesn't come. Lord, we know your ways are not our ways, so we set our faith in who you are. Even though you reign as high as heaven above, you tenderly love us, we know your heart, and we rest in who you are. Even if the healing doesn't come and dreams are still undone, you're a God and you are good. Forever faithful one, even if the healing doesn't come, you're still the great and mighty one. We trust you always. You're working all things for our good. We'll sing your praise even if the healing doesn't come. And life falls apart and dreams still are undone. You are God and you are good, forever faithful one. Even if the healing doesn't come, you are God and we will bless you. As the good and faithful one, you are God and we will bless you. Even if the healing doesn't come, even if the healing doesn't come. So I offer that today as not a downer, but as an encouragement for you if you're dealing with an issue that you need God's help, those words, even if things don't turn out the way you had hoped they would or the way you had planned in your mind, God has a plan for each and every one of us, and it's good. His, His plans for us are good and not for evil. So how do we deal with finding and living in, with an attitude of gratitude? We should be thankful even if we're in difficult circumstances. This kind of faithfulness, thankfulness is faith. Sometimes we read the story too quickly of the ten lepers. Slow it down and picture it with me. This is one of those stories in the New Testament that I can easily picture the ten lepers coming to Jesus. And when he heals them, they were so excited. Nine of them took off and one, ten of them took off and one came back to offer thanks for what God has done. So we start with 10 men who have the worst disease of their day. Martha's parents, uh, my wife, for those of you who are visitors, were missionaries in Liberia. And across from the compound where they lived was a leper colony. And she's described what she saw there. It's a grot can be grotesque. They can lose limbs. Some lose their hearing. All lose their hair. It's not a pretty picture, but leprosy attacks the body, leaving sores, missing fingers, missing toes, and damaged limbs. In many cases, the initial pain of leprosy gives way to something more terrible than that, a loss of sensations in the nerve endings and a loss of feelings. Entire limbs can simply fall off. It is assuredly a most horrible disease. We don't hear much about it these days, but it's still exist in Africa and other places. Beth Moore, whom is now an Anglican, by the way, in her book, Jesus, the One and Only, 
tells of an occasion she had to be a, near a modern-day leper colony. Something within her had always wanted to minister in a leper colony. I can't say that's always been one of my desires, but her trip overseas had given her the first opportunity to be near such a place. She walked by the entrance three times. She saw those who were suffering. She begged for a chance for her to go, to be able to go inside, but she could not. The reason? The smell overwhelmed her. She could not work up the stomach to go inside the colony. She could not bear the thought of witnessing for the Lord, but at the same time becoming violently ill because of the smell and facing the human beings already acutely aware that they were different. The trip passed and she was not able to go inside. And I think we gained a new appreciation of how bad this disease must have been in the days of Christ. It wasn't just the grotesque damage or the attack to our sight. It wasn't the loud cries, the attacks to our hearing. It was also the smell of rotting flesh, decaying flesh, and even our sense of smell. The emotional pain of a leper, however, must have been worse than the physical pain. I know that would be true. There could be no contact whatsoever with his children or grandchildren. No contact. Immediately he was removed. When a leper was approaching people who were not diseased with leprosy, they were required by the law to cry out, unclean, 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 to identify themselves as someone you don't want to be near, someone you didn't want to touch. But after Jesus touched them and healed them, nine of the ten were not unclean anymore, but they were ungrateful. They didn't turn around and go back to thank Jesus for what he had done for them. Lepers tend to room together, looking for food and begging for assistance from a great distance, learning to yell in loud voices, when they cried out, unclean, unclean, it was to the top of their lungs to give warning to those who were to encounter them along the way. If you watch the Chosen series, there's a beautiful passage where a leper comes and is healed by Jesus. To his surprise, he took off praising and thanking God. What would it have been like to have been removed from your friends and family for a lifetime and to have been forced to announce that removal on a daily basis? It must have been horrible. And yet in this account, ten men encounter Jesus and hear him say the most unusual things. We want to be well, they scream at Jesus. And the great teacher Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priest. The local priest had other than leading worship, did more than leading worship on each Sabbath. He was also something of a health official. If a person was miraculously healed of leprosy, it was up to the priest to inspect their body to test for a complete removal of the disease. If the person would have been cleansed, and at that point, he would be fine for the leper to see his wife again, to hold his daughter again, to work again. If the priest gave him the okay, he would be healed. Now Jesus said to the lepers, go and show yourselves to the priests. They looked down at their bodies. The hands of one man are still mangled. Another man looks at his leg, which ends with a filthy rag, at the knee. Another looks at his skin and finds it as repulsive as ever. In other words, all of these men were no better off than they had been ten minutes earlier when they had first spotted the famous teacher Jesus. And yet they headed off in search of the priest. And here's the key to the scripture. And they were, as they were on their way, they were healed. What God sometimes requires for us is to move when it doesn't seem like we're able to move or to thank God or have an attitude of gratitude when it doesn't seem possible that we have to thank God for. But they said as they were going, they had the word from Christ uh, that they were going to be healed. But they weren't healed until they took off and started walking toward their destination. And then one of them to return to give thanks to the Lord. On their way, they were healed, but a, a crutch tipped on a filthy rag and it fell to the ground. The leg was back healthy, whole, and complete. The skin cleared and the tiny hairs on a forearm turned to snow, from snow white to brown. One looked at the, at the other, another looked at the rest, and they started to scream with delight. The smiles broke into cheering and a sweet madness. They raced off in the distance, not believing that the nightmare was over. But in order for the miracle to happen, these men had to start walking in faith 
before their circumstances had changed one tiny bit. So I, that's my encouragement to each of us today. When God has promised something to you or to myself, and we need to start to walk in that faith that what he has said he will do. Even, even if the healing doesn't come, as the song that I read a minute ago, it doesn't come at that moment, at that time. God is still good, and he's still for us, and he still hears our answers to our prayers. That's the very definition of faith. If you praise God only in the good times, only in the best of circumstances, it really wouldn't be faith at all. That would be more like a business arrangement, and, that, and this is not about business. It's about a relationship with the Holy One of Israel, the God of the universe. Some of us, some of you are in circumstances right now that you need God to move on your behalf. So my encouragement is don't give up. Continue to pray, continue to believe, and start walking toward the healing or the answer to prayer that you so desire. While on a short-term mission trip in the 90s, a pastor named Jack Hinton from New Bern, North Carolina was leading worship at a leper colony on the island of Tobango. There was a time for one more song, so he asked if anyone had a request, and a woman who had been facing away from the pulpit turned around. It was the most hideous face I had ever seen, he said. The woman's nose and ears were entirely gone. The disease had destroyed her lips as well. She lifted a fingerless hand in the air and asked, Can we sing, Count Your Many Blessings? Her heart was with Christ. No matter what the circumstances were that she faced, she wanted to sing that song, Count Your Many Blessings, one by one. Overcome with emotion, the pastor left the service. He was followed by a team member who said, Jack, I guess you'll never be able to sing that song again. Yes, I will, Jack replied, but I'll never sing it in the same way. When God touches us, when God comes to us as an answer to our prayer and touches us for whatever need we may have, we will never, ever, ever be the same when he moves on our behalf. Thank thankful in the work of God's goodness is what he wants us to be. And this kind of thankfulness is worship. We worship God by thanking him by having an attitude of gratitude, even when the overhead projectors don't work in the church service. We can still give thanks to God for what he's done. My friends, that's the very definition of faith. If you only praise God on the good days, then that would not be faith at all. Well, why was the leper so loud after Christ cleaned him? The guy had been forced to yell for as long as he had had leprosy. Had it been years? He probably yelled so long, he didn't know how to come to the Lord quietly. But my, my encouragement to you is come to the Lord no matter how quiet or in, in the stillness of your prayer closet, wherever you are, whenever you are, and whatever you're praying for, God will hear your prayer. But the leper was loud and proclaimed what Christ had done for him because for 10 years he had had to shout the fact that he was unclean to the top of his voice. This week, you will have time to acknowledge God for his goodness, I hope, by being with family and friends, by thanking him with an attitude of gratitude and thanking him for the, what he's doing in your life. Can you miss it? Sure you can. It's a short week for most folks, which means you might be horribly busy for two or three days and then quiet. But you might have some time off, which means you've got some honeydew chores at home. Thankfully, we're going out of town, but that won't apply to me. There may be tasks at church that we're called on to do. There may be tasks that a neighbor needs help. If you're hosting a family, you've got to cook. You've got to get to the grocery store. You've got to call the turkey helpline again and again to remember how to get it done. I had that 800 number at one time. It's a butterball. One heel leper came back. One caught himself in the midst of the celebration, and he returned to Jesus. He reversed his steps, put his family first, on hold, and with the priest on hold, and came back to the cause of this celebration. His response and life situations were unique, but in the simplest sense of what he did, thankfulness led to action. And boy, did that turn out to be important. Jesus asked, where are the other nine? So I ask you today, are you one of the nine, or are you like the one who returned to Christ and gave thanks for what he's done for you? He longs to hear our prayers. He longs to have communication with us. He longs to heal us, but even when the healing doesn't come, he's still good. 
and we can be assured of his loving kindness toward each of us. No matter what we face, no matter what we're dealing with, my best advice on what Jesus was looking for 2,000 years ago is to take the step of action. Otherwise, a prayer over the Thanksgiving meal will last about as long as the football game that you might watch or the sensation of having a full stomach. I will always manage to eat well on Friday, but I will, more than that, every day of my life, I want to give a thankfulness to God for what he has done and thanking him for what he will do in the future, which I know is yet to come. Look at one more word. In verse 19 of Luke 17, Jesus said to the very thankful man, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Has Christ made you well today? If he hasn't, don't give up hope. Continue to pray for him and to call, pray to him and call upon his name because he loves you. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's his promise to each of us today to save us from sin, to put us on the right path, and be thankful for a man willing to, or a woman to follow God before their circumstances change. To worship God before he returned home, Jesus pronounces a complete healing, a healing that passes all other wellness terms. This man, Jesus said, understands. He's giving thanks for what I've done for him. Remember that the priest must make a declaration that a leper had been healed, I'll make a declaration to you today that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for each of you and for your families. And he will never leave us nor forsake us. And his healing may not have been seen yet, but rest assured, it's on the way. Amen.